Lufthansa is back to normal business. The new normal, of course. Uh, queues in the airport are still <laughs> normal, unfortunately. Next topic would be that uh, the second airport in the world has skipped all limitations on liquids. Yes. And we have a new deal zone alert uh, deal from Seoul in business class to Europe. Lufthansa Group collecting some miles. Business class, did I say business class? And planes get maybe a second barrier. Yes, that is, I don't know what they are trying to do with that. My name is Lars, I'm here to bring you more minds, more points and more status. Like always, I ask you kindly to subscribe to the channel, leave us a like, hit the notification button, the bell and a comment. Thank you for doing so. And if you're interested in meeting up and uh, asking questions that you think you need to uh, put in personal touch in it, you can do it. We can meet uh, in person. We will have regular tables in Munich, in Frankfurt, in Stockholm, in Helsinki, in Los Angeles. Not in that order. Um, the first one would be Munich, 12th of August, 13th of August in Frankfurt. Those are confirmed. What is confirmed as well is that the strike, which was yesterday kind of castrating Lufthansa, came to an end at six o'clock in the morning. The people came back to their shifts as promised and um, 1,000 flights were canceled, even more than 1,000 flights. 134,000 passengers were affected by this. And uh, even today, there are still some cancellations. Today, mostly all flights, like I said, are happening. So but some cancellation can still happen because everything is like a machine and if the machine which is oiled is having not enough oil it can happen 20,000 employees did go on strike as the union anticipated and hoped and uh, they say they made their point but until next week that is the fourth and third uh, fourth of august there will be new negotiations and for that they will not go on strike until then but hey <laughs> What would be Lufthansa and aviation without a strike? The pilots are discussing and voting if they are going on strike. So maybe they are the new ones who are striking. So unbelievable, it's uh, a pain. And uh, German politicians said, yeah, that is a problem. We shouldn't, um, uh, we shouldn't uh, uh, accept it. They have to get a solution, blah, blah. You know, the blah, blah, which comes from politicians and um, we see what happens. But like I said, um, in Germany, 14% of the uh, people in Germany were only affected by a strike in their whole life, 14%. So the rest, which is nearly 80%, never had a strike. So we are just a minority and we are um, victims on a high level. Please comment if you think that is true or if this is a misperception from the government. Yeah, we had the first airport in the world to remove their liquids rule from carry-on baggage. And it, it was a rule which is 16 years old. And don't get us wrong or me wrong, it's only the second. So there are two airports in Europe who are doing that. Um, and this rule which was uh, implemented 16 years ago. But it's, it's unfortunate that now we have a technology which is the CT scanning software, computer tomography. Uh, which you know maybe from the hospitals and this system should be rolling out faster and faster but uh, however one other airport is now utilizing this technology and the airport is uh, pronounced Dun and <laughs> it's irish i'm sorry i'm german i cannot do irish but if you are uh, <laughs> an irish native please apologize for my for my bad pronunciation, but you know that the people are dealing with that all over around the world. And the airport's um, indicator would be uh, Charlie Foxtrot November. And on the website of this airport in uh, Dunnagungal, oh, I cannot, sorry, maybe I have to get some Guinness then. <laughs> for, but the app I put on their website following, you can now carry your liquids without having to seal them in a clear plastic bag and without size restriction in your carry-on luggage. You can carry liquids including water, baby food, medicines and other beverages, aerosol cans and toiletries in your carry-on luggage with no size restrictions. This said, bring it all on, no problem. 
and the 311 rule in the US or the rule uh, maximum 10 100 ml uh, bottles or whatever container you use in a one liter bag. So that said, that is happening. But other airports are not following it. So when you go to Amsterdam, I mean, they had some technology in place for almost a year. Munich has this technology a <laughs> long time in place, but that is all test runs. London Heathrow signed a 50 million pound deal in 2019 to get this technologies, um, but the passengers still have to limit to the 100 ml containers. New Zealand Aviation Security Service, AFSEC, released a strategic plan in January 21, they have a wonderful name, Horizon 2030, um, then, then they maybe can change. But unfortunately, right now, it's still the old situation in play. And I think that you should write in the comments what you think about it, if you think that is uh, so 2008 and lame, or do you say that is, a, is something which is uh, safety first? And my opinion, I have a very strong opinion about it, and this won't be get the CT scanners out and get rid of this because so many people who are putting the things out on the belt and putting it in, it takes so much time and hassle. And when you see it in the US, for example, when you are um, TSA pre-approved, you don't have to do this headache shit anymore. So it's queuing, it's, it's fast and making faster the lanes, especially nowadays where the uh, queues are so long. It is really, really important in my opinion. FAA thinks that another topic is important and this other topic is a second door for the flight deck. The Federal Aviation Administration FAA has announced a proposal where they asked for a second barrier to the cockpit in commercial aircrafts. And um, it would only apply to newly produced planes. Um, of course, when the rule goes into effect, you have two years to figure something out. And it was a proposal and this new law intended to address situations where one of the pilots has to leave the cockpit, whether go to the bathroom or break or something. Currently in these situations, a flight attendant will simply block the aisle with a card and while the door is open. The FAA acting administrator, Billy Nolan, has said uh, that each additional layer of safety matters and that protecting flight crews helps keep our system the safest in the world. And... Um, <sighs> I think it's a little bit difficult because uh, when you look, how should the the barrier look like? If you have a if you have a door uh, um, somehow that you cannot use the toilet, or how should it work? And I think in one is it the 350 of Finnair? I'm not pretty sure which one it was where I saw it. I think they have a kind of the system where the door uh, opens a little bit further and then it locks, and then you can go into your sleeping thing and that you have a clean area there as well. So uh, I don't, do not see the need of it because why is it necessary? Because when you have now a look on the door, it is reinforced already and you cannot break into the cockpit, at least not without uh, having any heavy equipment. And who can get heavy equipment into the aircraft? No one, because it's not allowed. You have to put it in, check in luggage. Then... Um, you have the mentality around hijackings having changed. Previously, if someone threatened the airline employee with a weapon, they would typically let them into the cockpit. Uh, but uh, this wouldn't happen in the 9-11 world anymore, post 9-11, of course. And um, then the other thing is, even the passengers wouldn't uh, be happy and say, hey, yeah, do it, dude. No, they would fight it. And you saw, saw it on 9-11, for example, the one aircraft which crash landed in um, Pennsylvania, unfortunately. The, the people were fighting, even nowadays they are fighting. And um, how many planes have been uh, crashed in the past decade due to one uh, pilot being locked out? I'm not talking, for example, about the picture. Uh, I don't know which, where, um, I have to write it down next time, but there was a picture I saw it yesterday or two days ago, and I saw it so often, where a, a captain or first officer locked them out of the cockpit, and luckily they were on the ground, and they took this uh, bell thingy for the luggage and went up into the um, went up into the cockpit by through the window, and one opened the door. And the other thing is, what in flight, what happens there? In November 20, uh, uh, 2020, uh, no, 2013, so 
Um, Lam Mozambique Flight 470 crashed while the captain was in the cockpit and the first officer locked down. March 2020, 2014, Malaysia Airlines 370 went missing and nobody has a clue where this aircraft is. And the working theory is that the captain uh, was alone in the cockpit. Then the first officer was alone in the cockpit on German Wings Flight 9525, which crashed into the... Um, French Alps and um, was it Alps? No, but somewhere in France. And um, then in March 2022, the Eastern uh, China Eastern Flight uh, 5735 is supposed to be a su suicide when you uh, see what the US officials uh, predict on seeing the data from the flight. So there, in my opinion, there have been more aircrafts crashed because of pilots who are mentally not stable and The passengers are not mentally stable, but come on, it, it in my opinion that is more than um, yeah, it should be more than okay. And um, I mean, of course, it should be done uh, safe, but this is too much uh, hassle, I think. And uh, of course, it cannot hurt. If it doesn't help, it doesn't hurt. Uh, but in this case, it is uh, more weight, more pain, and of course, more trouble. But I'm looking forward to your comments. Please write down in the comment section what you think about it. Does it make sense, a second barrier? How does it work? And even if it's not completely closing or so, does it make sense? Because you can jump over and now there's a trolley and uh, I have here a trolley behind me. It's a half size. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Then deal zone. Deal zone is always the Fun part of every show where I try to have at least a great deal for you, deal today, would be from Asia to Europe with uh, Lufthansa business class to Frankfurt from Korea to Budapest. Budapest is always a nice destination. The minimum stay would be three days, maximum stay 12 months. Of course, when there's a Sunday before you, we don't have to stay three days, then you can go on the night, after the night from Saturday to Sunday, one you have to do. Uh, stays are uh, maximum 12 months. Like I said, stopovers two are permitted in each direction, 75 euro each. Change 250 uh, euros for cancel and no show refund. Uh, change is permitted for reissue, revalidation, and of course, fair difference has to be paid. We are all looking for more miles, more points, more status. And in this case, let us have a look. Air China brings us 18,758 miles. Singapore Airlines 14,570, Lufthansa 12,118. And remember, this ticket has only to be booked 14 days in advance. And now you still get the, uh, the 50% more points from Lufthansa until the end of the end as it's business class Horn Circle as well. Scandinavian Airlines by executive orders 25% as a Lufthansa frequent traveler, Senator or Horn Circle. Scandinavian Airlines, uh, Euro bonus 12,118. And if you are collecting with uh, Thai Airways, Latam, United, uh, Coppa or uh, Canada, you get 11,656. Canada gives you only 11,136, so a little bit less, but still in the same uh, ballpark. And all Nippon gives you 8,100. And Cassie Pacific, um, as it's kind of a co-chair situation, they say on where to credit 1,038. Um, like always, I check all these mileages on or where to credit. Thank you for watching Frequent Traveler TV Takeoff. Today's episode was again a little bit interesting, in my opinion, hopefully. And if you say it was interesting, don't forget to hit the um, subscribe button, hit the notification button, leave us a like and a comment. And maybe we see each other in real life. Would be happy to see you. Thank you and uh, thank you for your love. and. Uh, See you tomorrow for your next episode. Bye.